Do white men need to get tougher? Short answer, yes, no, it depends. I will explain my thought process, but first, a message from the sponsor of this video. None other than the greatest clothing brand, Legio Gloria. Do check out our wool garments, perfect for a handsome and comfy and cozy autumn, winter and spring. And while you're at it, do place an order for Dauntless and Demigod mentality. Now back to the video at hand. Now to respond to the yes part, this is something you've heard me talk about for many years, so I will keep it brief. Yes, of course, you should train MMA, especially if you are a younger guy and if you can't really escape Gotham City. So if you are in Gotham City a lot and it's um, you know, an insecure environment, then you should definitely endeavor to make yourself into a tougher target to attack. So the better you are at fighting, the less likely you are to be attacked and you know this can be seen via your body language and everything like that so view this as a um, weapon of self-defense that you should definitely train and even if you don't end up in any such predicament it's good for you it's good for your spiritual development as well so it's always good to train always good to train indeed now we're getting to the main point of the video being tough is not enough. Now we're switching focus to the no part and we're talking about politics because that's the the uh, true solution is political. The solution is political. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. It's not the only solution, but it's the main solution to our to the uh, to ending the multicultural nightmare so that we no longer need to be afraid for our children's sake. Now, anyway, I will use an example we can look at our esteemed brethren in the United States of America. You have there many tough guys, you have many veterans, you have a large part of the population, they're armed to the teeth, so they have a lot of potential in that sense. There are a lot of tough guys there for sure. Now, to the point, it doesn't do them much good. If you look at the demographic situation in the US, you have 56% white and declining. If you look at basically every single degenerate thing, you know, it has its origin in the US. So it doesn't really matter how tough all of these guys are. And by the way, to all Americans, do keep your weapons. I say it's something good to be tough. I say it's something good to have weapons. Legally, of course, I definitely salute you. I salute that you still have a good, healthy, manly culture in that sense. But the point here is that that type of toughness it's only good for self-defense it's not something you can impose your will on society and that is what we need to do so i made a video recently i'm sure you've seen it if you haven't seen it i encourage you to um, go and watch that video before continuing with this video i'm gonna repeat myself a bit but it's uh, very important stuff we can look at another nation of tough men we have france i know there's a bit of a meme the stupidest meme of all time the stupidest thing i've ever heard and that is to say that the French wouldn't be tough. France is the nation with the most military victories in history. Definitely tough guys. And, you know, they aren't shy to take to the streets to protest. But here again, it doesn't do them any good at all. Because they're ventilating some anger. They're showing how angry they are. And the powers that be in France, they, um, as I mentioned, they sip some fine champagne and they laugh at the... Um, the impotent rage and they continue business as usual there is no threat in street protests you know the the battle it takes place in the institutions of power and as long as you don't threaten them there they they aren't afraid in the least because ultimately political power is what determines the uh, future of a society so being tough is good but it's not enough so being tough is something you want to be for for self-defense so you can have a lot of weapons at home you you know you will be safer in your home you can be very good at fighting it will keep you safer on the mean streets of gotham city but it's it's not a path to power and i do encourage you train as much as possible it could quite literally save your life to be able to throw a punch at the uh, the right opportunity um but this is only for self-defense. If we want to get out of this nightmare, if we want to create a good society for our children, again, where we don't need to be afraid for them, for their future, then we need to initiate political change. So, some white men, they need to get tougher to be able to defend themselves and their families. 
in the here and now, but we also need to look at the long game and then toughness, it's simply not enough. So what matters then is, you know, more intelligence, discipline, organization, political will, actually having the, um, having the humility, having the courage to initiate a long-term plan to keep your discipline up. I will use an example of a tough guy who is also intelligent and who is fully committed, Martin Sellner of Austria, and I mention him now because we have had some very promising results from the Austrian election where the nationalists they have made a spectacularly good election. Now of course there's still a lot of realpolitik to be done so it's not like they can initiate remigration tomorrow but they are at least on the right path and Martin Sellner he's been at it for a long time. He's taken a lot of heat, a lot more heat and pressure than I have and as I said before I've taken pressure and heat for a very long time, constant pressure and he's been under even more pressure. He's always kept his discipline, he's always kept his cool, just you know calmly marching forward pushing his talking points and now and by the way, if you're not familiar with his work, his main talking point, which is of course the correct analysis of the situation in Europe, re-migration, and now we have the Nationalist Party, FPÖ, in Austria talking about re-migration. So thanks to his hard work over all of these years, thanks to his toughness, the right kind of toughness, I've never seen him do anything silly, I've never seen him do anything stupid, always kept his cool, always kept his discipline, always kept his guard up, pushing firmly towards the only goal that matters, political power, shifting public opinion, getting our talking points into the um, into the discourse. We have in Austria a very promising political development. Of course I don't want to say too much at the moment but I'm just saying that I'm cautiously optimistic. So look at Martin Sellner if you want to look at a tough guy who has done it the correct way. He has been intelligent and tough. You know a conscientious and sensitive handsome young man doing the right thing for a very long period of time. That's true toughness. Not so not going out on the street throwing some rocks at the police or rioting or anything like that. I understand the impulse of wanting to do something and doing something in that impulsive worldview is yeah to, to show how angry you are instead of the more manly calm way to just look at the long term goal. How can we implement positive change in 10 years? So now Martin Sellner you know, I can't speak for him, but I can only suppose that 10 years ago he said, yes, in 10 years, if I work hard enough now, we can actually get in this particular talking point in the uh, in the government of Austria and we can actually start implementing these necessary changes. So, re-migration. So, anyway, that is true toughness. Now, on a somewhat similar note, I thought to talk a bit about the police. I know a lot of guys, they are frustrated with the police, saying that they are bad, everything like that, and the police, they are neither good nor bad, they are just taking orders. What matters is who gives the orders. So, in an optimal scenario, of course, we have our guys, good men, good, kind-hearted, conscientious men, who look out for the well-being of our people. They are the ones giving the order. So, Optimally speaking, in 10 years time we have good men, kind-hearted, gentle souls in these positions of power and they give the orders to the police and they say to the police, you know, now your job is not to harass dissidents, now your job is to keep normal people safe from, the, um, from bad men, simply put. And if you don't, if you don't have the capacity, then we will sack you. You can find another job and they will say, aha, okay, this is my orders, I will do as you say. This is the reality of the situation when it comes to the police. So stop getting emotionally invested in uh, whether the police, if they are good or bad, they're neither. They're taking orders and I understand that, that someone might say, you know, taking orders is not an excuse, but I'm just giving you the, the red pill here. That's the red pill on the police that the police themselves, neither good nor bad. And I'm saying this, I believe that at least in Sweden, 95% of all police officers, they are good men and women who only want to, you know, keep society uh, safe. But ultimately, they also take their orders from uh, from high above. So we need to replace these individuals who actually give the orders. So, main point, be tough in the sense that you have the toughness, fortitude, will to do something for a long period of time. And then we can actually start seeing results. So be patient, be disciplined, be structured, try to make the good the right connections, try to develop yourself as much as possible, try to get into a position of power where you can actually implement change instead of trying to solve the situation from the ground. 
you know the society is run from from high up it's not run from the ground so yes do take responsibility when it comes to the safety the security of your family do train do take responsibility for everything that happens here and now but also take responsibility in the sense that you try to work towards getting our guys into positions of power and i understand most of you who are watching this you are already in uh you know you, you already have a job everything like that so i'm talking to a few younger guys who might watch this when i say to go into politics for example um so i'm talking to a few guys some guys by the way they're more suited to do other things such as you know journalism or metapolitical activism um, creating content you know pushing our talking points so it also depends on your unique talents um, so you sort of have to look yourself in the mirror see what am I good at do I have the capacity to go into politics yes or no if you're better at you know getting certain talking points into the uh, into the mainstream yeah then you should maybe become a you know a streamer or something like that um, and if you are of a different temperament yeah do something else and if you already have a job just make sure to support financially the guys who are working towards um, these goals so everyone every man has to do his part everyone can't be the same or do the same but everyone has at least has to do something so anyway that was my rambling from this beautiful forest i hope it was somewhat insightful thank you for watching and thank you for your support